How we doing? And welcome back to Memphis Regionals 2018. You are about to watch the one and only finals between Ashton Cox and Jeremy Rodriguez. My name is Ryan B. Hebert alongside Trevor Rosberg. Trevor, how are you? Well, I'm ready to see this mirror. This is going to be uh, definitely an interesting one since every single thing is the same between these two since they are best friends and they brought the exact same thing. No mi no mix-ups at all. So uh, this is going to be an exact mirror. That's correct, Trevor. Both players are playing the same exact team from every move to every stat. What they do is uh, they team build together. So, you know, that's the thing about Pokemon. you got to build with multiple people to have a really great team. And it's been proven right here today. Both players bring the same team to every regional they go to together. And here we are today where both players have top cut and uh, facing off in finals. Yeah, so from here, uh, going into this game, we, we've seen the team over and over again. Smeargle, Xerneas. Absolutely. Toxicro Toxicro, Crobat, Lunala, and the Incineroar. So we're, we're probably going to see right off the bat, though, and this is going to be Smeargle, Smeargle Xerneas. Uh, yeah. The good, the good two that they go together. Like, they've been together since VGC 16, and they, they finally got to make their return in VGC 19. So Absolutely, Trevor. From here, we're probably going to see that double lead, and it's going to make things interesting, needless to say, since there's mind games upon mind games since both Xerneas are also running Substitute to be able to block lovely kisses from the opposing smear goals. Not to mention speed ties, as you were saying before, since they're every, running yep, the same every speed. Every single speed tie is going to be there. So we've got so many different options that can be thrown out. Every single thing is going to be dice flips. Smear goals are going to be getting all of their boosts that we've got to watch out for. So. When we talk about RNG, Trevor, you know, every now and then maybe something speed dies here and there. This is going to be the game for RNG. Who is the luckier player? And uh, here we are. The players are setting up. Um, and it looks like, you know, they have the same team. Not to mention, if you look at the, uh, the boxes for both players, they are mirrored as well. So we have a top cut mirror with uh, their boxes being mirrors as well. It's going to be an interesting game, let me tell you, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, what's going to be uh, coming out of this game exactly. Now, we Trevor has said before, Smeargle Xerneas is probably going to be the lead. I could definitely see Incineroar in the back for both of these players as well. The Incineroar is definitely an option in order to target down the Lunala from the opposing sides, most mm -hmm. likely, but from here, it's going to be definitely interesting because... Be we could also be seeing Toxicroak as well, since Toxicroak has a decent matchup against Xerneas, yeah. but it can't take too much in terms of hits. You've got, obviously got Poison Jab pressure. You've also got Faint to be able to break potential protects, but absolutely, we don't know exactly what's going to happen besides most likely Smeargle Xerneas is from both sides to start. I'd be interested to know if Crobat's going to come into this equation at all with that Tailwind and Speed Control. I'm sure that, you know, Geomancy is enough, but if either of the players decide to switch it up, I'd be interested to see what happens. We've also then got the option, it does carry Haze and Taunt usually. Yes. Another thing is Super Fang, possibly, so we've got an interesting thing as we see a vigorous <laughs> handshake occur on stream. Oh my as these goodness. these two are about getting ready to go into this battle. Dude, those arms just wiggled for days, dude. So, Probably going to see Smeargle Xerneas from both sides, Lunala in the back for both of them. Yes. And from there, the choice of support is going to be interesting as this is a different lead Ooh, than what was expected. There it is. As I was saying before, Trevor, that Krillbat, well known for its inner focus, so it cannot be faked out. And ooh. On this side, we've got the Lunala as well. So both players thinking of uh, the other ones probably going to bring Smeargle Xerneas, so uh, they didn't bring Smeargle Xerneas themselves. Exactly. Neither player wants to deal with Smeargle, so neither player will bring Smeargle. But I'm very interested here, Trevor. Do you go for an attack off on this Crobat? Because here's the thing. It, I believe it's the fastest thing on the field right now. It most likely is the fastest thing, and it obviously is scared of a potential Psy Shock coming out into it, but depending on what goes on here, we can see we could see a taunt, though, into the opposing Xerneas to make sure that you do get it. But if you taunt that Xerneas, then what happens is the question. But we do know from previous games, Lunala is outspeeding Xerneas. Yes. So you cannot psych up beforehand. That is correct. And the other thing is that, you know, if you Tailwind here, and there it is, getting that Tailwind, getting that speed control, you got to wonder, does that Lunala carry the Tailwind as well? 
No, going straight for that Psy Shock, aiming into that Crobat, trying to get it off the field as soon as possible. It does hang on here as we do see a Moonblast come out. Just straight Moonblast into the opposing Xerneas. You gotta wonder, did Jeremy... Oh, Substitute. Ooh, bringing him down. So we do see the Substitute come out here. So, uh, oddly enough, neither player Geomancy'd here. No, Maybe not at all. Maybe fearing the Psych Ups coming out, fearing Taunts coming out. So from here, we do know that both of these are kind of more offensive Xerneas. Neither is fast. So we do know that Lunala will be outspeeding Jeremy's Xerneas, but the Tailwind is going to be the big factor here. Yes. This substitute that Jeremy has set up, you know, I'm curious how long that will be staying up as well. And it looks like the taunt's going to go into the substitute. Make sure that there is no setup able to come off as we do see another Moonblast just fired off into the Lunala to break the Shadow Shield now. As another Psy Shock is fired off this time into the Xerneas. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. As Moonblast is also firing off this turn potentially into the Xerneas as well trying to make sure that that's taken care of and it does drop. Ooh, wow. That Moonblast taking that Xerneas out without a fight and uh Ashton losing his Zerni is this close, uh, you know, in the beginning of the battle could be a game changer, but not to forget that taunt from Crobat did go into Jeremy's Zernia, so no Geomancy is coming onto the field yep. for at least taunt, the next couple turns. Taunt being able to bypass substitute thanks to the fact that it is technically a sound based move. So you are able to make sure that there is not going to be any Geomancies coming up as we do now see the Lunala hit the field on Ashton's side, which is going to be threatening a huge Moongeist beam into yeah. the into the other Lunala. That is a scary Lunala. Tailwind doubling the speed of Ashton's Lunala so that, as you said, Trevor, that Moongeist beam, if it is targeted into Jeremy's Lunala, it is going to be doing a lot of damage. Both players taking their time here and choosing their moves, thinking very carefully, you know, what is the right play? This Crobat's still sitting on the field. Maybe it's time to, to either switch out or... Maybe, uh, yeah, there we go. There's the Crobat switch. Into Incineroar. Interesting switch here. So Incineroar hitting the field. Obviously, we're going to have fake out pressure next turn, but that's not going to do much if this substitute does stay up. But we do see the Lunala switching out into the Incineroar of his own. So obviously not wanting to take the potential Moongeist beam into that slot. Instead, rather wanting to take the resisted hit. So from here, we do see that we do fire off the Moongeist Beam, and it was likely into the opposing Lunala just to take care of it. So we'll see just how much damage it does actually do to the Incineroar, but actually wanting to just take out that mm. substitute. So. Yes. Yeah, that substitute uh, now being gone, the fake out pressure from both Incineroars, you've got to wonder who. Oh. Okay. We do just see the hit straight into that yeah. Incineroar, doing well over half on it. So from here, we've got the situation of. Fake outs are also going to be here, and fake outs are speed ties. Yes, so it is now a coin flip to determine who gets the fake out first. Because if you feel confident in that coin flip, you could be faking out the opposing Incineroar to stop their fake out as well. Yeah, although there is a Tailwind still active, Trevor, so... I correct, yes. The Tailwind's still sitting on the field for one last turn, so the, the fake out is safe to go straight into oh, the wow. opposing Incineroar, oh. and we do still have the straight kill going into the opposing yeah. Xerneas. Yeah. But those Tailwind's not going to be around for long. Yes, Tailwind now failing this turn, so when the Lunala does come and hit the field again, we are going to be right back to speed ties now, assuming that Lunala is the one who will be hitting the field here. And we actually, it changed. So we do see... Oh, Crobat. Crobat Jeremy the bringing field. the speed control as well, but keeping it in the back and keeping it hidden. This is a game changer. Both players bringing the same four Pokemon. Yeah, no Smeargles and no Toxicroaks for either player. Oddly enough, the Smeargold not being brought. As we do just see Tailwind easily set up here, yeah. obviously wanting to be able to ensure that you've got the faster Lunala, and Psyshock does come out here into the opposing Crobat. But will we see a powerful knockoff from Jeremy's Incineroar? And we do see the Psyshock do just about as much damage as it did last time. And a knockoff actually going into the opposing Incineroar. And we do see a U-turn actually fired off this turn. 
into the opposing Incineroar to be able to get his own Crobat yeah, in now. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised to see that Crobat come right back onto the field and get another Tailwind up. <coughs> yeah, so Crobat coming onto the field here. Incineroar, even though it has the Tailwind, not, not going to be able to outspeed that Crobat, even yeah, with the Tailwind. Yeah, that Crobat definitely going to be the fastest thing and likely going to see a Taunt come out from the opposing Crobat Yes. Into yeah. Ashton's Crobat in order to stop it from going for a Tailwind here. As it likely doesn't carry many attacks, if since most most are not carrying any attack to actually hit a Ghost type, since most of them do opt to go for Super Fang. Yes, very, very true. So the question here is, it's most likely that Jeremy is probably taunting Ashton's Crobat. That's... Yep, I think it's safe to call that one. Yeah. So the question is now, does Ashton then swap into his Incineroar and protect his Lunala? Because in that situation, then, you get your Fake Out pressure back on for the next turn, as we actually see the Lunala being the one to switch out into oh, the Incineroar. Well, that Intimidate coming onto the field against uh, Crobat and Incineroar, going to be a nice attack drop there. As we do see Taunt, like... Like assumed, however, it was oh. actually going into the Lunala slot, maybe trying to stop it from being able to protect as we see Super Fang come out into the Incineroar, trying to get that chip damage on it, recognizing that currently Incineroars are the threat to the opposing Lunalas. Yes, absolutely. Safety goggles revealed on Crobat. So, safety goggles being interesting to be able to stop things such as Spore, but as we've seen, both of these Smeargles are carrying Lovely Kiss, so... But Safety Goggle's not going to be an item that actually does anything in these games. Not at all. And it looks like the Incineroar and Crobat are in an interesting position here. The Incineroar being able to get off a powerful knockoff onto that Lunala will be a big, big game changer. And Ashton's Incineroar really is low in health. So the question is, is do you protect the Lunala here? to try to protect a knockoff, or do you just go for a straight attack? I mean, I would think that I would want to try to stall out this Tailwind. I, I think this turn, it's likely going to see a fake out into the opposing Incineroar and a Moongeist Beam follow-up in order to take that kill on it. And as we do see the fake out come out, straight into the Incineroar. Ooh, but the critical hit. As we do see Super Fang come out, it does take down half of its health, but there's the flinch, and then the Moongeist Beam comes out and is able to hit hit this Incineroar. With, with the Spooky Plate boosting it, we don't know if this kills it yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it? Oh, going into the Crobat to knock that out. Probably wanted to have the potential to... S mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, curious. I'm curious about that play. The taken down, maybe, maybe thinking that... No, because they, they've got the same move, so he knows that there's no Protect on the Incineroar, yeah. so... Welcome back to Speed Ties, folks, except that there's Tailwind still up. Yeah, so from here, we do know that this is going to be speed ties coming into this next turn, so we're likely going to see a protect here from the Lunala just to be able to preserve that Shadow Shield coming into the next turn. But Incineroar is obviously going to likely be the target yeah. here. Have, no, oh, the moon guys wow. being there, so Flare Blitz as well now going yeah. into the Incineroar being the strongest attack going into that slot, likely being able to kill it, and it, we do see it take it out, so... Now we do have this Lunala still with the Shadow Shield up, though. And more recoil damage, just enough to proc the berry, though. Very smart play by Ashton, knowing that if he Flare Blitz, he would get enough recoil to pop his own berry. And we see Tailwind does peter out there, so we are going to be back to speed ties now with these Lunalas. Correction, Jeremy. Correction. See, I'm getting mixed up. Getting mixed up here. Both players are playing the same team. There yeah, we so go. From here, though, we've got Speed ties on the Lunala. Lunala is potentially protecting, as we do see here. Yeah. Just to be safe. So, from here we've probably we're going to be seeing a knockoff. And Moonguys Beam does go into that slot, thinking yeah. maybe it doesn't protect. But knockoff comes out here, and this should seal up the game coming into this next turn with another yeah. knockoff. Spooky play being knocked off there. Interesting item, as you mentioned last round, Trevor, to be holding on this Lunala, boosting that Moonguys Beam by uh, 1.2. 1 1.2. Yes. 1 so. Yeah. As we do see, Jeremy does win the speed tie, so obviously going to be able to kill off the opposing Lunala since it is four times super effective with the ghost and dark type attacks. Both players shaking hands there for a great game one. Uh, very interesting plays from both of these players. Uh, very inter interesting to know that neither player brought the Smeargle to 
their game, which you know is something that we've seen in all of their other games on stream this yeah, weekend. Yeah, every other game they've been bringing the Smeagol Zernius duo since the, the best buddies, basically, those two <laughs> together since VGC 16. So curious to see them not brought because in place of that Crobat, being able to pressure Taunts, yes. being able to pressure Haze, Tailwind. So still not, although not an exact mirror on leads, we did see that it was still a mirror in terms of what they brought. You have to wonder about this cord that they're using, Trevor. So I was able to catch up with Ashton and Jeremy a couple times over this weekend, you know, kind of asking them about the team and how it works and that sort of thing. And they were saying that the team started with Lunala, Xerneas, and Smeargol. And from there, they kind of built off of that. They were the, crediting the core to Nick Narav, uh, who actually got ninth place here at Memphis Regionals this weekend. And uh, as we're going back into this here, uh, you know, not bringing the Smeargle to this very important uh, core with these three Pokemon, it's just been so interesting to watch. And going into a game two here, I think both players might just start the same way they started in game one. It is an option that we could see that exact same thing, but obviously the matchup here being the exact same makes things interesting because you've got to be in the mindset of the other person of if they change up theirs to counter yours, what do you have to counter theirs back and forth since, once again, exactly the same. So, huge yeah. mix-up coming in. Yeah, I agree with you, Trevor. I mean, you can't really sub out that Incineroar knowing that that Lunala is going to be lurking in the back, that knockoff, and just the resist to Moonguy's beam is so powerful. But that Crobat just provides so much advantage with speed control from Tailwind and the Taunt, be meaning that Xerneas is not going to be getting off a of Geomancy if in front of that Crobat. So both players really taking their time here to choose their moves. Ashton locks in, and Jeremy is about to do the same. Game two is starting up, folks. I hope you're excited because I'm excited too. Let's get started. So in a second here, we're going to see these leads and see just exactly what each player is going for. And so from now, though, we'll see. I, I feel like we're going to see the possibly the exact same leads. Crobat as well, but a mix no. up this time. We <laughs> do get the Smeargle on, on screen this time. As we see the Smeargle oh Xerneas against Xerneas and Lunala. So now we've got the mix up here of this Smeargle being on the field. See, this is a big, big change. Having that Smeargle on the field, being able to fake out Xerneas or even Lovely Kiss is huge. But at the same time, that Lunala does boast a high special attack. And uh, that Smeargle uh, could be looking at something, hitting it. Yeah, it could be, could be potentially doubled into turn one just to cleanly kill it out. But yeah. we don't know exactly what is going to be happening here because Lovely Kiss is obviously a pressure here. Substitute could be gone for. Fake out so there couldn't be a substitute. Yeah. If you ever, if Ashton ever geomancies, then there could be a psych up as well. If I'm Ashton, I feel comfortable geomancying, but the thing is, is that that's right. That psych up on Lunala could happen, and I feel like we're about to see that. Yeah, this game definitely going to be like, it, it's super, super interesting because like we're sitting here and we don't know exactly which player is going to go for what because there's mind games upon mind games at this point. As we do just see fake out to stop a potential substitute or geomancy as Moongeist Beam just. Yeah. Just wanting to get as much damage as possible into the Xerneas right away. As we see just around 50% as Geomancy does come out here. And the one thing that we do need to see exactly is going to be what happens with these Moody Boosts now though. Because if there is a Moody Boost in speed or accuracy, or evasion. Yeah. All of these are going to be huge factors that come out now. Absolutely. This game is really a game of chance right now, and this Geomancy boost is just adding to As Ashton's we see luck. A speed, speed boost there for the Xerneas, but the Moody boost being attacked does nothing, and we see an evasiveness, evasiveness. fall, Ooh. which doesn't really do anything with these all these 100% accurate attacks. So from here, though, we're likely going to see the Smeargle go, go ahead and just press follow me this turn. Yeah and just let off the free moon blast for the Xerneas. Wouldn't be surprised to see that Lunala switch out. It is definitely a possibility for Lunala to switch out and try and preserve it for later, but if you if you do switch it out, then you are risking just free attacks as well coming out here. Yeah, I feel like on Jeremy could Geomancy here uh, in the face of this Xerneas, because I think if you can knock out that Lunala, you know, being... Because we do oh, see Lunala yep. switch out this time into the Incineroar, maybe is. trying to hit, take the hit for the Lunala later, but if this 
if this Xerneas just gets hit here, then it's not doing anything positive. But another option is we do just see Protect, though, actually. So. And I believe in game one, we did see the Incineroar take a Moon Blast from the plus two, but it looks right. like... Yes, it, it did put it very low as Lovely Kiss comes out into the Lunala slot, so Incineroar going to bed means there is absolutely nothing for it to be able to do this incoming turn for fake out. So now we're still in this situation that a defense boost and what's the drop? Evasiveness again. Yes, yeah. But yeah. we're still in the same situation of you can just lovely kiss into the Xerneas slot and Moonblast it, and there's no downside to this play right now. Not at all, uh, Trevor. You know, you could go for a double protect here, but, you know, what could, could that do you? Uh, you might as well either switch out into Lunala or just take the hits and just pray that in the next turn that that uh, Incinera is going to be waking up. As we do see it switch out, this time into the Lunala. So Lunala going to be taking this plus two Moonblast most likely. And granted, it can take it with Shadow Shield. It's You're losing this Shadow Shield now and yeah. probably... Oh, and the special, and the attack, special drop. attack drop. That does not help. But as we do see Lovely Kiss go into that slot too and connect... So from here, this Ashton definitely in the driving seat this game yeah. since turn one off of the Lovely Kiss and the Geomance. Yeah, that's bringing that Smeargle in uh, the first turn here has really been the uh, you know the game changing play for the second game for Ashton to try to bring it back. We did see a special attack uh, boost there, but uh, not really doing much. Absolutely, yeah. These Moody boosts doing nothing from here. This game's probably just going to be cleaned up through moon blasts at this point since he's probably still got a team full of support sitting in the back anyway yes yeah ashton hasn't revealed his other two pokemon and that is a very very good sign so far uh this he has been a driving force as you said trevor so uh, i think that we might see a moon blast going into this incineroar here just to uh try to take it out as we do see crobat hit the field and right now a follow me as well so what could be coming up this next turn, though, is unless a Moonblast goes into the Lunala slot this turn, we could see a Haze potentially to try and reset this. Oh, you're right, but sweep. we did just see the knockout of Moonblast on that Incineroar. So that is definitely a roll then for the future. We do see a speed boost on the Smeargle from this Moody, so that could be changing things here. Yeah, depending on how fast this Crobat is, if it's not max speed, it's definitely going to be in potential lovely kiss range yes, now. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Jeremy Zerny is returning to the field right now. If you can find a way to block Ashton Zernius here, then... Uh, yeah, I, this is a very difficult situation right now. Uh, Ashton is in a very, very good spot. Jeremy has this Crobat, but you know what can you do? Knowing that uh, the Focus Sash is on that Smeargle... Uh, <laughs> yeah, from this situation, you're still at, you're you're down way too far at this point with one thing already being asleep. So we do see the protect here, maybe trying to call the moonblast into that slot, but we do catch moonblast oh, there. Wow. But if lovely, if lovely kiss does connect on this crowbat and it and, does oh. not, which means haze comes off and hard resets down right now. The RNG was not with Ashton, and the lovely kiss has finally missed. So now that this finally misses, we do have this game back to where we were to start because we've now got a potential Lovely Kiss going into the Xerneas on Jeremy's side now in case it wants to try and set up. It did just protect, which means Moonblast can go into it. We've seen the Moonblast do over 50%, so Jeremy could also just Moonblast and kill off Ashton Xerneas. Yes. Yeah, multitude of possibilities here, Trevor. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Tailwind from this Crobat just to secure some speed control for the future turns. Or a potential Taunt at this point. Yeah, You could likely well. see a Taunt go into the Smeargle slot just to shut it down from doing anything. And then Moonblast goes, and then he sets up right away. Actually, opting to not even do that. He goes right back into his Sleeping Lunala instead. As we do see Geomancy come up for Jeremy. Winning the speed tie. I'm curious, Trevor, uh, with this Geomancy, uh, will we see a Lovely Kiss coming out from Smeargle? Yeah, without a taunt, we do have potential for Lovely Kiss coming out this turn now. So now that we don't have that, we could actually just see Lovely Kiss put it right to sleep. As we do see the Moonblast come out, 
likely into that Xerneas just to do damage to it. Yeah. Obviously not doing much, and we do see Lovely Kiss. Oh! Actually going into the Crobat, though, this time. As we do see an Evasiveness rising sharply to counter out the other ones. Yeah. So we will just have regular Evasiveness now on this Smeargle. So from here, though, we do have the geomancy up Xerneas now sitting on Jeremy's side of the field. Well, it's about time Jeremy took the tide again. I mean, he's been he's been trying his best to come back, and that's the thing about Pokemon is that there is always a win condition, and Jeremy has shown us right now that he has turned the tide and gotten that geomancy. I wouldn't be surprised if that Lunella wakes up next turn and that geomancy uh, <laughs> you know, Xerneas furs off a Moonblast. So here we do see the Moonblast go right into the Xerneas, making sure that that's not allowed to do anything coming into these turns. But Smeargle probably going to try and fish for a Lovely Kiss here yeah. in order to make it so that the Lunala on his side does come in, and he oh, does miss the Lovely my Kiss. goodness. Another miss for Ashton Cox. Jeremy enjoying that miss there as both players look at each other and uh, know exactly what's going on. Yeah, from here, though, we've got... Now that that miss, though... Lunala can't really safely come in and just take the boost with Psych Up. It will likely still steal them, but you're still looking at the situation that you've got to be taking stuff not to, taking the Moonblast. Trevor, not to mention that Crobat is still on, on, in the back on Jeremy's side. So if he decides to Psych Up, that Crobat switching in could mean another haze. But at the risk of his own Xerneas losing so, its stat boosts. From here on Jeremy's perspective he likely wants to go for a psych up obviously if he wakes up and probably a potentially a substitute as we do just see spiky shield come out Maybe i wouldn't mind predicting a follow me or something into that slot oh the moon blast going into smeargle wouldn't mind seeing the moon uh, a moon guys beam going into jeremy's lunala right now from ash up oh, psych up there it is as we do see the psych up come out just to steal those boosts, so now we do have the stat change stolen, and this Lunala is looking in a really good spot now to clean up the game. Since this, this Smeargle is now in a position that it can just press follow me for the rest of the game, and all you've got to do is just keep pressing Psyshock at this point. Not to mention we just had a sharp increase in accuracy on Smeargle, so Lovely Kiss is now not going to be missing. Yeah, from here, Ashton might have pulled it back off that turn protecting on his, on his uh, Smeargle. So from now, we do see, we're likely going to see just a follow me being pressed to make sure that the psych up from Jeremy's Lunala can't, can't steal the boosts or anything off of his Lunala. And we're likely going to see a Psy Shock go right into that Xerneas slot. Yep. Yep, and there it is. And it is enough damage to knock out Jeremy's Zer uh, Xerneas. Yes, and the Lunala wakes up. Moon Guy's Beam does not affect Smeargle. And from here, we see another speed boost and a defense drop. So from here, it looks like Ashen has cleaned up this game. Since we do know that it is safety goggles, Crobat in the back. And we have seen the full moveset revealed. So we know that all we've got to do at this point is just follow me and Psy Shock into the Crobat. And then there's absolutely nothing Jeremy can do to clean up this game. Not at all. It looks like Jeremy has fallen behind and Ashen has managed to catch back up for this game too. So from now, it's, it's just going to be Ashton just has to click in the follow me and press the Psy Shock button. So if you're heading into game three, what's the what's going to be changed here, do you think? I think that I really want to be sure that my Incineroar is better taken care of because uh, Jeremy's in, uh, Incineroar was knocked out so early in this game, and I think he was relying upon trying to live the plus two moon blast from that Which Xerneas. Which we did see it did do one time, though. So we, we did, do know yeah. that the, that living that hit is definitely a roll. So another issue, though, is this Smeargle has been putting in so much work that yeah. I think Crobat, Crobat might need to be led possibly on Jeremy's side in order to be going for something like a taunt into it to be able to stop it from doing anything so from here we, we probably we might see another Smeargle lead we might see Crobats being led or Jeremy might still stick with the one that he has been going with beforehand you know Trevor Lunala Xerneas two games in a row yeah 
I wouldn't be surprised to see the Crobat lead from Jeremy, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised to see them both lead Smeargle, Xerneas, and just go for it go in Go for game the three. Game 3 Moody boost? Absolutely. Who's going to get the better luck? I think that a few turns ago in this game, too, uh, if the taunt had come off on to that Smeargle, I think this game would have been a little bit different in Game 2. Absolutely, but we did see the Lovely Kiss miss, kind of delaying the yes. comeback that did end up happening, since it did look like Ashton was definitely in, in very behind Jeremy in terms yeah. of there was a Geomancy dub Xerneas on the other side of the field, but as we can see, Shadow Shield does prove to be a very important thing in, in helping you actually take the plus two Moonblast, since otherwise you would drop if that was broken. Absolutely, Trevor, and it looks like Jeremy has locked in. He knows what he's doing. He is ready to face his best friend. Both of them have done multiple arm actions and movements when uh, hitting each other with Moongeist beams to end the games, and it looks like we are going to get started here in just a moment. Uh, honestly, I really wish both of these players the best, Trevor. It's so interesting to see a mirror match between the two of them. They're shaking hands. They're good sports about this. They are ready to rumble. Let's go. And so in terms of the leads, Smeargle always makes things interesting with, as we did see, the spiky shield can potentially break the opposing Smeargle's focus ash if it does go for fake outs. As we do just see Jeremy stick, same lead that he's been going for the whole time. And on this side though, we see the Lunala and the Crobat, which is a different mix up for sure. This is definitely an interesting mix-up, Trevor. And the thing that I see on Ashton's side is the capability to psych up uh, Xerneas if it goes for a Geomancy and then just get a free Tailwind off right here. Yeah, from here, we could see potential... I don't think... If I'm Jeremy, I don't think I ever boost in the face of these. I think I'm always going for a Moonblast here. Yeah. Probably trying to break a Shadow Shield. And in terms of what Jeremy wants to do, you're prop or Jeremy's probably going to want to try and attack and maybe Psy Shock. Yeah. Maybe double straight into this Crobat. I would not be surprised to see Jeremy's Lunala switch into an Incineroar right here to maybe even predict a Moongeist Beam from Ashton's Lunala. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Or also just straight protecting it. Play it safe this turn. Get your Tailwind. Make sure that the speed's in your favor. But actually just going straight into the Super Fang... And knowing Moongeist Beam, Jeremy does get the Moongeist Beam off first into the opposing Lunala, wow. most likely. And likely going to be a roll with Spooky Plate, whether or not this kills. And it does hang on. Yes. And instead, we see the Moongeist Beam now coming out from Ashton's, likely going into the Xerneas that he just went for the Super Fang into, just to clean off this kill. And it will be enough. Xerneas gets taken down off the field, and we overhear both players saying that that moon guy's beam onto Ashton's Lunala was indeed a roll, Trevor. So it must have been an extremely low roll if they thought it was that much, if it lived on 37 health. So right now, we've got an issue of potentially going into something like Incineroar for knocking off and pressuring things, but nope, just going for the Crobat. We're probably going to see two Tailwinds this turn then. Crobat v Crobat. I would not be surprised to see the Tailwinds, Trevor. And also, I think this would be a great opportunity to switch out uh, Jeremy's Lunala right here. Now that he lost that Xerneas, I would love to see an Incineroar in the back here just to be, make sure that you're uh, resisting any more Moon Guys beams that decide to be fired off. So from here, we do have an interesting spot because if Jeremy outspeeds um, the Crobat of Ashton, we can potentially taunt it to stop the Tailwind. As we do see Smeargle come into the field, as one Tailwind goes up, now the question is, does Ashton go for a taunt or just his own Tailwind? And we do see the Tailwind come out here. Will we see a Moongeist Beam? We will. We do see Moongeist Beam going wow. into a Smeargle switch in. And the question is, evasiveness boost and accuracy drop. So, so the Lovely Kisses aren't doing much, but now we've got the situation that evasiveness on the table, so accuracy is going to be a huge factor if he goes for a follow me. Yeah, I agree, Trevor. And the other thing here is that there's not much damage output being threatened onto Jeremy's, Jeremy's Lunala right now. There's zero damage that's actually being able to pressure onto this Lunala. 
onto that slot. It is perfectly safe to do anything it wants at this point. Yeah, Trevor, I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a side shock uh, either go into that smear goal or uh, the krill bat. But, you know, it's a matter of is there an incineroar in the back for Ashton trying to predict where the side shock may go? Spiky Shield coming out from the Smeargle here, so just wanting to play it safe makes a lot of sense. Taunt As coming out. you see Jeremy outspeed and get the taunt off first onto Ashton's, but Ashton might just be going for Super Fang to chip down. As we do see it go for that, since we didn't know that Psy Shock doesn't kill it straight up, it leaves it very low, but it does leave it like that. But the fact that it helps him out for later, he can potentially be able to get something there. As you see, attack raise. And, and speed, speed fall. falling. Oh, the last thing you want on this smear goal is your speed stat to be falling. So both players here uh, having a really, really great turn. Ashton getting that super fang off and the uh, side shot going into the krill bat. Uh, so now it's just a matter of what is this smear goal going to keep doing on the field? Uh, do you even go for a lovely kiss with the accuracy that you have right now? Potentially, since you have just protected, you really don't have much else to do except maybe fish for that lovely kiss. It's super low accuracy, but it might be the option that you do have to go for at this point. And you see Lunala hit the field again, and Follow Me come out just to try and take advantage of this evasiveness that he's got going for him. So we see Taunt go into that yeah. slot oh, and connect. Oh, this is a big deal, Trevor. Taunt on a smear goal is something that you never want to see. However, oh. the Psy Shock missing means that this will be a preserved focus, Ash, for later in the game. Yeah, Ashton definitely taking advantage of the increased evasiveness of his Smeargle, but at the same time, what can this Smeargle do now that it's been taunted? Absolutely nothing. We've seen the moveset, Lovely Kiss, Fake Out, which doesn't work anymore than it's not its first turn. You've got Follow Me and Spiky Shield. None of these are... None of these are doing anything at this point, so we know that this thing has to switch out here. The question, Trevor, is what is it going to switch out into and how can Jeremy take advantage of the situation in order to try and win this game? This is the final game in this set to become the regional champion of Memphis Regionals 2018. So from here, though, we obviously are going to see it switch out, likely into the Crobat in order to take a hit. Just in case anything goes into that slot, you just want it to be able to be sacked here and come back in. As we do see Lunala go for the Protect here, and Super Fang goes into that slot just to do any damage to whatever comes in. And we do see Moongeist Beam go into that slot as well. So, this is interesting now because we've got Smeargle likely to hit the field again now. Yeah, uh, Jeremy predicting that switch out there, and the Tailwind's petering out, but Jeremy still has his Crobat on the field. Which means he can go for it to try and destroy any of those speed ties, but if he goes for that, then that means Lovely Kiss is on the table if you don't taunt this Smeargle. Absolutely, yeah. So you, uh, Jeremy's at a crossroads right now. Do you try to get speed control, or do you taunt that Smeargle to prevent your Pokemon from being put to sleep? That is the big question. Another thing is... They would know this, and we don't right now, but it could be inner focus on this Crobat. You could fake it out just to try and take care of it and then play the speed tie game with Moongeist Beams, but... I think that's a really risky play, Trevor, and if it's not if it's not inner focus... I... But we do just see Ooh. the straight switch yep. out into the Incineroar. We're probably going to see a Lovely Kiss here then. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, Trevor, to see the Lovely Kiss come out here, probably going into that Lunala... As we do actually oh, just to follow, follow me. me. Trying oh. to redirect a Moongeist Beam potentially, since we do know it is safe as long as it doesn't get hit by that, and Moongeist Beam does get fired off, likely into the Lunala slot to be able to try and just break Shadow Shield. Now, will Ashton get this roll and maybe seal him the game? So we do see it's in red now. Psy Shock does come out. Jeremy making the right play here, knowing that he needs to be able to hit this in case it does go for follow me. So. From here we've got the Moody Boost again, attack going up, and the drop is in speed. Speed. Once again, that Smeargo just getting slower and slower. Ashton getting uh, a little, uh, you know, frustrated here, trying to figure out what to do. Both of his Pokemon at such low health, and now you have an Incineroar on the field. That is fake out pressure right into Smeargo. Uh, so, you know, you got to be asking yourself, what, what do I do here? I think from here, though, he does have a potential out, though. If he do just All he has to do this turn is just double protect, and then the following turn go for follow me, and then potentially attack into the Lunala to take care of it. Yeah. 
if it does protect though, then you're in a risky situation. But if Xerneas is hiding in the back, you could get the boost up on Xerneas then. Yeah, that's well, the thing. Ashton has preserved his fourth Pokemon. Is that correct, Trevor? Yes, we have not seen it, but the previous game he did have it. So we do just see the first Protect come off and likely going to be a Spiky Shield as well. Yeah. Yep, so for this turn, just making sure that the Fake Out can't come out. And you also get yourself another Moody Boost just to check exactly what you're getting. As we do see the U-turn go off here into the Lunala trying to get a little bit of positioning going on here as Moody comes off and we get a special ah, attack boost special attack. and a defense drop, which neither of these making a difference at this point in no. the game. So right now we do have a very potential follow me here and the Moon Geist Beam into that slot. But if you protect that slot, then we're going to come down to speed ties again. Yes. Yes, we will, Trevor. So, I see Jeremy protecting his Lunala here. I think Jeremy needs to protect Lunala, and Ashton likely goes for follow me in order to try and just redirect the attack and get the switch into his Xerneas if he has hiding that in the back. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you are targeting a Moon Geist Beam right into Incineroar right now. opting to switch out into the Xerneas, deciding that maybe he does want Smeargle in the back for a potential follow me. Later on in or the Or lovely kisses as well, as we do see that Ashton wins the speed tie and is able to fire off this into the opposing Lunala slot to be able to cleanly kill that with that yes. much health left. So from here now, we do see where this knockoff there is not even a knockoff just a u-turn and, and it does not pick enough. up the kill so from here ashton looks like he might be able to just seal this game up since crobat and incineroar aren't going to be able to do much at this point no yeah you're completely right trevor this crobat and incineroar might not be enough to clean up this game here uh, Lunala probably gonna go for a protect next turn but i would not be surprised to see a fake out onto that xerneas as well if not, just going in for an attack or even a knockoff onto, uh, onto Lunala. But from here, there's no way to touch this Lunala before it can press Psy Shock into that no, Crobat. That's not the at issue. All. By being Ghost type, you're safe from this fake out. We've seen that the only move that this Crobat has is Super Fang, so we know that there's nothing that can stop it from just pressing Psy Shock into the Crobat. And as soon as that goes down, we know that this Xerneas wins the game from here. Super Fang going into Xerneas on Ashton's side of the field. Recognizing that it is the big threat right now and knowing that it's the only thing that could potentially salvage the game is Incineroar Flare Blitz crit, maybe, to kill off this Xerneas. And it appears victory may be close for Ashton Cox. Incineroar is just left on Jeremy's side of the field. And he recognizes that Flare Blitz crit was the only really win condition and just decides to go for the safe substitute because... From here, all you've got to do is just substitute up, and then the next turn, you've got more potential damage. You've got to protect still. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so from here, all he's got to do is just make sure that he gets some damage off into the Incineroar, I think. Absolutely, Trevor. And stall out, because once Smeargle hits the field again, Smeargle's going to have a fake out turn. It's going to get Lovely Kiss. It's going to get Follow Me. So all of these things are going to be taken into consideration to be able to attempt to take down this Incineroar. So if a Protect is about to come out, who are you targeting into if you're Incineroar? I think if I'm Incineroar, you might have to... If you do call the Protect and you target into this Lunala, which is switching into Smeargle... Yeah, there you go. This might get you away back into this game. Because as we do see Protect come out... Yeah. But if the, if the hit did go into Xerneas, as we see Flare Blitz come off ah. into that slot... That means that Ashton did yep. actually just seal this game up from here with yes. the fake out and Geomancy going Absolutely. to probably come out this turn just to ensure that he will be getting Moon, Bl Moon Blast to do enough damage to kill off this Incineroar. Trevor, this is a long awaited moment for Ashton Cox. If this plays out in his favor, this will be his first regional win. Yes, it will be his first one as we do see a critical, critical fake hit. Out. Oh my goodness, and there's the Geomancy Xerneas. So we see that, and then from here, all he's got to do is just press Moonblast twice. You've got one Moonblast in case it somehow doesn't kill. You've got to follow me to redirect the attack. So from here, 
Ashton Cox has sealed up his victory at this regional. Yeah, yeah. both players recognizing now uh, what's happening. Uh, Moody giving us an accuracy boost. And All right, so the accuracy boost actually making it so he can just lovely kiss his way out of this one as well. Yes, Doesn't he can. Doesn't even have to follow me. Yeah, but the chip damage on that Incineroar is just enough where this plus two Moonblast is going to be sealing up the game for Ashton. So something interesting to note, though, the previous turn, if the Lunala slot was targeted on the switch out, yeah. Smeargle doesn't get in, and then Xerneas, Xerneas going for protect means it can't protect the next turn. It doesn't have enough health, I believe, to be able to go for another substitute. Depending on its health, I don't remember if it was 203 or not. Yeah. Actually, and, no, it should be able to substitute. And there you have it, folks. Once and for all, Ashton Cox is your Memphis 2018 regional champion. Wow, what a set between these two players. He has finally done it. <laughs> Fine. As we see them hugging <laughs> over the table there at the end. Ashton Cox finally pulling his first regional win. I mean, can you believe it? This guy has won an international event, top cut multiple events, and hasn't won a regional until now. Yeah, every, everyone in Ohio knows how much he plays and how good of a yeah. player he is. They they all recognize it. He, he plays so well at multiple events. Many regionals, you see his name up there. Yes. He consistently pulls off good, win, good, good records. The fact he finally pulled his win, though, proves how good of a player he actually is. It is a well-deserved win, and I also just want to say, Jeremy Rodriguez, congratulations as well. Second place at a regional is a fantastic placement, not to mention that you and your best friend made it to finals with the same exact team. That, my good sir, is impressive. But uh, it looks like uh, we're going to be back in a couple minutes here. We're going to get you a player interview with the Memphis 2018 regional champion. Stay tuned. How we doing? And welcome back to Memphis 2018. I am sitting, sitting next to your regional champion, Ashton Cox. Ashton, how does it feel to finally be a regionals winner? Well, I have been playing this game since 2011. And I have been playing in Masters since 2014. Mm -hmm. I have gotten second at three regionals so far. And I think I've gotten top four at like 10, if not more. And so finally winning is nuts. Like it just does it usually I'm used to like at the end of a tournament, I did something wrong, you know? Yeah. And now it's just like it's such a surreal feeling I haven't had since Brazil because I think that was, you know, twenty seventeen and a whole like whole three formats ago really. Yeah. And that was like that was a while ago. So this is like a, a great experience that I haven't had in a while. It's really nice. And of course, playing against Jeremy, my great friend using the same team, like <laughs> I thought it was wild. I mean, I think it is really incredible for both of you to come to a tournament with the same team, which, you know, I was talking to you guys before. It's something that you commonly do and to team build together and really go through that process. And here we are today, both of you in finals. I mean, how does it feel to know that you and your best friend both made it to finals mm -hmm. and had to compete against each other? What does that mean to you? Well, uh, we actually have a 100% cut rate when using the same team at regionals. Okay. Like, it's kind of weird. I think we've done it twice now with the first in Virginia with the Metagross Lele thing mm -hmm. and now here with this team but at the last one we were also on opposite sides of the bracket but we both got eliminated yeah. in top eight ah, so we okay. kind of we saw we were on opposite sides again and we're like we have the chance again we have the set we have the redemption to close out uh, finals with the same team and honestly we both literally when we got to finals we looked at each other and went how did this team make finals <laughs> and I mean so it, it's it's still pretty crazy but um I, I think I, I'm not really sure. It, it's just really crazy that we could we could both use the same thing. And I mean, I think we both uh, understood it well enough and could pilot it, uh, obviously to the finals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think we we both had the same thought process going into building the team, playing the team, and the execution of it. As you've seen, it's kind of uh, brought us to the same spot. Yeah, you know, Lunala made some appearances this weekend, but nobody was ex as successful as you two. Would you guys have any tips out there for anybody uh, considering running a Lunala on their team? Well, yeah, I, I think the weird thing about our Lunala is we had Psych Up, right? Which uh -huh. everyone says, oh, it's Psych Up, it's a gimmick, it's, you know, whatever. I think, um, I clicked Psych Up, that 
you know, mattered. At the times I clicked Psych Up that mattered and mm -hmm. changed the game were like two or three. I think Lunala did a lot of work as a ghost psychic type. That, that it, two shots, basically everything. It's very strong. I, I, I'm very surprised. I think this was the first major event that Lunala actually cut. Yes. And, yeah. And and of course, you know, closing out finals, Lunala. So like, I I personally believe it. The meta might shift in a direction where Lunala is a little bit more popular because I I really coming into this event, Jeremy was all about Lunala. I had wanted nothing to do with it. And it changed my mind. It definitely changed my mind during this event. So I would agree, Ashton. I think you've changed a lot of people who were watching uh, minds, you know, in general, really. Just this core of Smeargle, Xerneas, and Lunala, so powerful. And then the support Pokemon that you built around it, having those three fake out users absolutely amazing and then having crowbat to get that extra speed control on top of having geomancy oh, yeah. on your team well one of the weird things is you know i put smeargles under the top right yeah. that's an intimidation thing <laughs> it's funny because personally when i see smeargles are in team preview i go oh my gosh i need to know what i'm doing if they lead that if i don't they win because they let it yeah so it kind of just it's really at the top to throw people off it is absolutely not my most popular lead I think I brought Smeargle to five games this weekend. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Did I bring it all three games in finals? Uh, I don't remember. If I no. Game one. The first okay. game, you did not bring it. And yeah. then game two, that's how you turned it around. You brought the it was, Smeargle. Oddly enough, the adaptation of Smeargle was great in finals. Okay, so four games. I brought it four games. Yeah. Two, two in Swiss, two in finals. And that was the only times I used Smeargle. So really, it's not a Smeargle team. It's a Zern Lunala team. And I think that is really what um, carried it to the top. It wasn't had nothing to do with the Smeargle. So anyone who says, like, oh, it's Smeargle Zerny is, you know, it really wasn't the Smeargle. Well, Ashton, is there anything else you want to say to the people out there that are watching your supporters? Any thanks, any shout-outs, anything like that? Uh, shout-outs to Ingrid and David, my two really, really, really good friends who are have been rooting me on this whole weekend and, like, keeping me updated and talking to me, making me not so, like, freaked out. Uh, you guys helped me a lot. Um, obviously, shout-outs to Jeremy, the guy who built the team with me, who I played. Absolutely. It was uh, only because of him. Okay, uh, I have something to tell on. the whole stream. Yeah, um, please. So we did the Lunala count, and it's supposed to be a 70% chance to KO. Um, but I had like 34 HP left, and I was like, that's wrong. So I went and I looked at uh, my Lunala. My Lunala has 252 attack EVs and zero special attack EVs. Wait. And for the damage roll you got on me to be possible, that means you have max physical attack Lunala. I just won a regional with max attack Lunala. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. I'm bad at EV training, I guess. Max EV... Lunal. I mean, how much better can it get? How much better? How much better can it get? I just get? want to say that if that shows anything, we both just closed out a regional with a Lunala that had zero special attack EVs. It's pretty good. I don't know how that happened. Nobody at me about that. I genuinely don't know how that happened, but apparently that's a thing. So, wow. Well, yeah. Ashton, congratulations. Hold that trophy for us one more time. Hold it up to the chat. Show him. Max attack Ashton Lunala. Cox is a regional champion. Yes! Let's go! How? I love it. That's Folks, beautiful. We are going to be right back. All three casters are going to be back on here. We're going to be talking about the stream, talking about what happened, and giving you some thanks for this week, and, and then closing out Memphis Regionals once and for all. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.